So this is a special episode. I literally was laying down in the bed thinking, can I even get up to do this show tonight, right? So just being transparent, I'm a little sick under the weather. Some think I'm very sick. I think I'm okay, but I won't go into details on what my sickness is, but let's just say at this point in the game, I need to be away from my family in a, in my own separate room for a certain number of days, right? So that's happening. And I was like, should I do the show? Am, am I going to do the show? And I was going to maybe just do an audio version. But my kids have been really good about staying out of my office. I've been away from them all day. So I know, like, you know, they're asleep now. So I said, you know what? I'm going to just go in. So I did not have the capacity or the time to do all of our graphics and the stuff that we're doing. We do have our little border here in the bottom. But in terms of like some of the graphics and and the screen shares that we've done, we're not going to do as much for this show. But I do have all of the information that you're accustomed to. So we're going to dig right in to provide you some value. We believe every NBA fan who plays fantasy football should also play fantasy football basketball. With NFL playoffs right around the corner and the NBA season in full swing, BetOnline has you covered with all the up to the second odds, news, and scores. With additional odds, lines, trends, and info on both desktop and mobile, you can access the world's best wagering information anytime. Head there today to get into the action and see all the updated odds. Remember, to use the promo code BELIEVE to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. So the first thing we're going to do is just run through the schedule. I have my notes here with me. Typically, we'd have some graphics on the front, but we're just going to plow through this to make sure that you get that value. So in terms of the schedule, on Monday, we have eight games. Tuesday, we have five games. Excuse me. Wednesday, we have eight, Thursday, seven, Friday, eight, Saturday, 10, and then Sunday, we have five games. I'm just going to get a quick sip of this water. My throat is a little. I'm going to push through for y'all. I'm going to make sure we get this value in week 14. So in terms of um, the, the teams that have four games, we have Atlanta, Charlotte, Dallas, Detroit, Indiana, Memphis, Milwaukee, Minnesota, the Thunder, Suns, Trailblazers, and Spurs. Then the teams that have three games, we have Brooklyn, Boston, Chicago, Cleveland, Denver, the Warriors, Houston, Clippers, Lakers, Miami, Pelicans, Knicks, Orlando, Philly, the Kings, Toronto, Utah, and Washington. Then some of the teams that have great schedules, we have Atlanta, Indiana, Memphis, OKC, Phoenix, and Portland all have four quality games. What are quality games? Quality games are pretty much when you have, excuse me, (coughs) nine games or less, and you have the ability to stream. So they're streamable days. What are streams? Streams are when you cycle players in to your lineup uh, on a daily basis even when you take your bottom two roster spots, like your two worst players, and then you use those slots to fill in every week. Next up are back-to-backs. We have a Monday and Tuesday back. We we have a Tuesday and Wednesday, I should say, a Tuesday and Wednesday back-to-back where we have OKC and Portland playing. OKC and Portland. Uh, Then on the Wednesday and Thursday back-to-back, we have Golden State, Miami, Minnesota, Washington. On the Thursday and Friday back-to-back, we have Indiana. And then on the Friday and Saturday back-to-back, we have Charlotte, Dallas, Houston, Clippers, Bucks, Pelicans, and the Spurs. And then we also have a Saturday and Sunday back-to-back with Detroit. And then we have a pseudo back-to-back, which is pretty much when you have a high-volume day in between two low-volume days. So with two days that you can you can, you can can stream are sandwiching a game that you can't. And if you have questions about that, just drop them in the comments. But that is Friday and Sunday. 
Uh, we have a pseudo back-to-back, and we have Atlanta, Indiana, Memphis, OKC, the Magic, Suns, Trailblazers, and the Raptors. So I want to make sure you guys get um, as much value as possible today. So I want to make sure we push through and give you all of the nuggets that you need. However, for people who show up to the live stream today, we're going to be doing something very special at the end of the video or at the end of the episode, I should say, we're going to go into our believe in fantasy overtime. That is only available for people who watch the video, uh, watch the episode live on YouTube and are part of the live stream. Excuse me. So what we're going to do is at the end of the episode, we're going to ask you to share your trades. Like what are the trades that happened? What are the trades that you have already sent? What are the trades you're thinking about? And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put them into a trade analyzer and analyze them and talk you through it right here on the show. So we're going to try that a little later on just for kicks. Now, here are the top five waiver wire targets you need to take a look at for fantasy basketball. The first guy I want to talk about is someone that got a lot of hype early, right? He's a really young guy who had a couple of big games. He's even in the conversation with some of those young young legends like LeBron James. He did he had some stats that were similar to LeBron James. I'm talking about from the Memphis Grizzlies, Gigi Jackson, aka Gregory Jackson, right? So, if you look up Gigi Jackson in your free agency pool, he will likely be available. If he's not, you're playing with some really good players, but currently He is just rostered in 3.1% of ESPN leagues. He's just rostered in 18% of Yahoo leagues. He is literally the youngest player in the NBA right now. The youngest player. Right? So he's a young guy with a lot of upside. So we always want to get ahead of these things, right? We don't know what he will be. But you know what somebody like Nick Nick Batum is going to be, right? We've seen that that movie. We haven't seen this movie. This is unreleased. This is a fresh mixtape. So, like, grab Gregory, a.k.a. G.G. Jackson, off of waivers. And I would recommend being patient with him if you are in a position where you're winning. You are sitting good in the standings. You appear to be heading towards a playoff berth or you've already clinched a playoff berth then he's the kind of player that you let let him just cook and simmer slow for the next couple of weeks to see if something is there. Because as this season winds down for the Memphis Grizzlies, rest assured that they're going to try to see what they have in this young man. They're not fighting for a playoff push. They're really trying to assess the talent that they have and get ready for next year when Ja comes back healthy, Bain is healthy. You know, I don't even know what what it's going to look like when Bain returns. You know, they might not want to risk any serious injury. So we'll see what happens there. But I would definitely recommend grabbing Gigi Jackson. Next up is a player that I don't believe in my long-legged life ever on this show. In all of the years, what this is our third season, right? So we've been doing this show for three years. And if you've been a part of the community for any amount of time, thank you. But especially my OG folks who've been down since the Game Pick podcast days, we're super grateful for you. But I don't think I have ever, 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 ever mentioned this man as a potential waiver wire target. But today, we about to take the top off. Boobies is out. Hair blowing in the wind. Convertible status. Let's get it. I'm talking about Marvin Bagley Jr. What? What? What they, did they say Marvin Bagley Jr.? Yes, I said Marvin Bagley Jr. So check it out. Marvin Bagley Jr is just rostered in 15.9% of ESPN leagues. But he's rostered in a whopping 57% on Yahoo. That means something, folks. We got to pay attention to that. We have to pay attention. So Dan Gafford is is banged up. And with Dan Gafford banged up, let me just take it back a little bit. So 
he recently joined the Washington Wizards in a trade, right? So this is his third destination. He's been, uh, he started, he was drafted by the Kings, ended up moving to Detroit. Now he moved over to Washington. So new scenery, young player, still a lot of runway ahead of uh, ahead for him in his career. And Dan Gafford being injured is kind of like the perfect storm to see what we can get out of Marvin Bagley Jr. He's also auditioning for the Washington coaching staff and ownership, right? So it's not just like a fantasy thing. This is just like a real life thing. This young man is trying to make sure, like he was a, a lottery pick, you know what I'm saying? He just hasn't really struck gold yet. And he's having a really strong start with Gafford out. And as long as Gafford is out, he will hold some value. Uh, some value. Right now, he's the only healthy center in Washington. So pay attention to Gafford news to see what happens. But when Gafford gets healthy, do not draft Bagley because Bagley can also play the four. And we don't know what they're going to do over in Washington while they're throwing all of that spaghetti up against the wall. Let me get a quick sip of this water. I'm getting <coughs> trying to push through, y'all. Okay. Next up, we got Herb Jones. And I know Herb Jones has been stinking up the joint from New Orleans, New Orleans Pelicans. He had a really hot start, was killing it, and he has just been plummeting. So people are like, hey, Robin, why in the heck would you tell me to, 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 to grab Herb Jones if he's he been stinking up the joint? I'll tell you why. Recently, it was reported, it was reported by Matt Moore from the Action Network that the Pels are considering moving Herb Jones. The trade deadline is right around the corner, y'all. So some of these moves, we have to start making them speculating what could happen, but also just getting ahead of things that we believe, you know, might transpire in this in this frenzy that's about to happen with the trade deadline. So for me, that's the, the move there. He does have value if he's with the Pels. So I would just, you know, take advantage of that low value right now, which is decent. It's not like he's totally stinking up the joint. He has some good games and some bad games. He's currently rostered in 26.6% of ESPN leagues and 57% of Yahoo leagues, right? So people see some value in him. I would just grab him now as we approach that trade deadline. But if he gives you too many stinkers and you're not in a position to stomach that, then it's okay to drop him. But I think this would be a nice kind of a thinking forward, thinking ahead uh, ad for your roster. Next up, Jabari Walker. Jabari Walker is just rostered in 4.3% of ESPN leagues. He's only rostered in 29% of Yahoo leagues. Listen, with what they're trying to do over there is really figure out what they have, right? They got a bunch of injuries, it's really an opportunity for a player like Walker to kind of, you know, stake his claim to some minutes and to some value in the short term. So I would just give him an ad, see how it goes. Give me a second. I'll get some more water. <coughs> Next up from the Toronto Raptors. Jonte Porter, only rostered in 0.7% of ESPN leagues and 7% of Yahoo leagues. Definitely somebody that I would take a look at in deeper league formats, but I've, I've even seen people add him and talk about him in 12-team formats. But if you're in a deeper league, 14, 16, 18, and he's available, that's definitely somebody I would be trying to snatch up right now. Um, he is a bit of a long shot. And I would say just tracking his recent, um, his minutes, the, the, the minutes that he's logging, that he needs more minutes, right? So it's like 18, 20, he's in that area. And I think he just needs more uh, minutes. But it's worth noting that this past Monday, he did have his first start of the season. So I don't know if that's a sign of things to come, but it's definitely something that I'm going to keep an eye on. I've already picked him up in my 14-team league. As always, I try to make sure I give you some bonus um, waiver wire targets. Please note, week to week, some of these guys remain on this list. 
and I don't want to like feature the same people every week. Uh, we've done that in previous seasons. This year, I'm creating this little bonus section just so the people that are still relevant, we don't lose sight of them. So I'm going to fire them off. I typically do my yes, no, and maybe deal just for fun and kicks and also letting you know where I stand on them. When I say yes, that's like somebody I'm, I would definitely add or I've already added. Uh, maybe it's like I'm kind of on the fence. No, it's like I heard about them somewhere or I saw someone else write about them or people are talking about them, but I'm not sure. So I'm going to try to see if I can <clears throat> push through with the yes, no's, and the maybes. Let's get it. So bonus lightning round for the waiver wire. Trey Jones, yes. Wendell Carter Jr., yes. Jeremy Sohan, yes. Andrew Wiggins, mm, maybe. Santi Aldama, maybe. Xavier Tillman, yes. Nick Richards, yes. Gogo Badedze, maybe. Alec Burks, maybe. Mason Plumley, heck to the no. I am out on Plumley. Luke Kennard, yes. Brooks, maybe. Duncan Robinson, maybe. Nas Reed, yes. Alice Caruso, emphatic, yes. Jordan Hawkins, Maybe. Larry Nance. Maybe. Derek Jones. Maybe. Daniel Tice. Heck to the nah. I am out on Tice. Introducing Did It, your ultimate fantasy basketball cheat code. Imagine having a personal sports expert in your pocket, ready to dive deep into your league, analyze your waiver wire, and provide winning strategies all through a one-on-one -on -one video call. Did It is more than just advice. It's a game-changing experience, offering you the unique ability to share your screen with me, Robin Marks, fantasy expert from Believe in Fantasy and NBC Sports Roto World, your man's in them, and literally go under the hood of your fantasy team. And here's the best part. Your first call is absolutely free, up to $25. Don't miss out on this incredible opportunity to elevate your game. Download the Did It app today and dominate your league. Here are the top five by lows that you need to pay attention to for fantasy basketball. <coughs> Get another sip of water, guys. First by low we want to take a look at is Scotty Barnes. Scotty Barnes over the last 14 days has been ranked number 59. Come on, man. Like, listen, this is a guy who literally is the face of the franchise in Toronto. People are looking at him like he is going to be the next Vince Carter of, Tor of Toronto basketball. The Kawhi Leonard, the one-year Kawhi Leonard joint. I mean, excuse me, 59 is low for Barnes. Barnes at some points have, has been in the top 10 and he's been a staple of the top 25. So this is an opportunity to buy low on Scotty Barnes. Next up, De'Aaron Fox. Over the last two weeks, he's ranked 65 in points leagues. Come on, guys. We got to make a move on Fox. Next up, over the last two weeks, this guy has been ranked number 66. He has been a consistent first round player for years and he is finally finally declining father time has caught up with him i'm talking about the babyface assassin steph curry steph curry i still think he has something left in the tank he's better than rank 66 in points leagues he's better than that and i think this is an opportunity if you want to take the risk right because there's also the risk that the warriors are are bad right now. They're like, they're not even in the hunt to a uh, playoff uh, spot. They're like looking to see if they can get in the play in tournament. So I'm not playing tournament. The, um, the ins. Yeah. Yeah. The play in tournament. My apologies. So yeah, they're trying to fight for like those spots. They're not even in the race with that said, I still believe in Steph Curry and I think he still has something to offer. So I would definitely try to buy low on Stephen Curry. Next up, 
Kristaps Porzingis. Over the last two weeks, he's been ranked number 68. He had a big game tonight. I think he did like 30-something points at the time of recording this on Sunday night. Um, so Porzingis still has a lot to offer. So for me, I, I would definitely be interested in having him. My biggest concern with KP over the years has been his health, and that seems to be getting to a place where we can deal with it. Like, NBA players are going to miss a couple games, right? Nobody's playing all 82 games. But him, like, missing a few games here and there, I'm okay with that. I'm just not okay with the extended absences. The extended absences are what I really have an issue with. And then from the Portland Trailblazers, Anthony Simons. Anthony Simons has been ranked number 99 in the last two weeks, y'all. Come on, man. Like, he is way better than that. Way better than that. He has been banged up, so that's something worth noting. But I always say that's a great opportunity to buy low because when a player is injured, sometimes those managers feel a way they need to, like, move on from them, and you probably get a deal in that kind of a scenario. So I want to talk about sell highs, but before that, i got to get a sip of water or drink the whole bottle of water. And... I just want to share something that's super important. We need you to be a two-way player. I need you to play on offense by subscribing to the YouTube channel if you're watching us there. And also on defense, I need you to listen to our audio podcast. And if you can, leave us multiple reviews. You have no idea how much it goes in to creating these co- this, this content here, but also our short-form content on Instagram and on TikTok. It would be really kind of you if you could subscribe to the YouTube channel as well as listen to the audio. We want you to be a two-way player in the Believe in Fantasy universe. Here are the top five sell highs that you need to pay attention to for fantasy basketball. The first sell high is DeMontis Sabonis. DeMontis Sabonis is great, and I'm not saying you need to move on for him. I'm saying that you might be able to get like a higher level player, like somebody like Halliburton or SGA, if you create the right package right now. (coughs) Over the last two weeks, Sabonis is ranked number seven. So he's in the top 10 over the last two weeks. So this could be a narrative that you create to see if you can bring back one of those premier players for Sabonis, especially in points leagues, because those rankings are from points leagues. Um, and all of these rankings that I'm using are from points leads, just so we're on this on the same page. Next sell high is uh, is Rudy Gobert. Rudy Gobert over the last two weeks has been ranked number 25. He is ranked number 25 over the last two weeks, which is huge. And honestly, this is something that I was talking about with one of my buddies the other day uh, about how Minnesota took that risk. I think it was with my NBC bros, with um, Raphael Johnson and my man Noah Rubin in one of our group chats. And we were talking about how finally this is all coming to fruition, right? So that now when that trade happened, when Donovan Mitchell and Gobert were both traded off, people were looking at Minnesota like they were crazy because like it, they, they put up so much to get Gobert back. But if they can get a championship off of this, I don't know if they will, but if they can, like it was totally worth it. And Ant-Man is the key. He is the center of that whole thing. And him having those twin towers is just a really good look now that they've grown in to all of their potential. So I'm excited to see what happens. But um, for Gobert, I would definitely be trying to move him right now if I could. Then we have Brunson from the Knicks over the last two weeks, ranked number 14 been going off if I can get a a clear first rounder for him I bust that move with the quickness Jalen my apologies um yes Jalen Jalen Williams Jalen Williams from the OKC Thunder over the last two weeks ranked number 25 yes and we've been waiting for Jalen Williams right people were drafting him like crazy he had a really slow start some people were trading him off and now It's starting to all come around. For me, I'm trying to get rid of him and run because I don't know what's going to happen. There's just so many mouths to feed in OKC, and I'm not sure if he'll be able to 
maintain top 25 value like he's been producing over the last two weeks. Last but not least, we got Jared Allen from the Cavs over the last two weeks. Ranked number 15 in points leagues. Definitely somebody I would be taking a look at to see if I can move and get something a little better for that. Now, let's open up the Believe in Fantasy Basketball mailbag. The cool thing about the mailbag is that we're taking questions from our community, and they probably have the same questions as you. So let me go ahead and just pull that up really quick, and we'll get into it. Get another sip of water. (coughs) Okay. The first question is from Zoomin. Zuman says, I am currently in a 10-man points leagues and sitting good. Should I trade Vassell and OG or Middleton? I don't know which one I should choose for DeMar or Cat. So he's saying Vassell, OG, and or, or Middleton for DeMar and Cat. So for me, D- for DeMar or Cat, um, I would do it for Cat. I would give up Vassell. And Middleton for Cat. I'd hold OG. I'd hold OG. Just because I haven't seen enough of what he's going to do in New York. And I'm really fascinated in seeing how that develops. But definitely, I would offer Vassell and Middleton to get Cat all day, every day. Uh, Next one is from Danny. He says, is Jeremy Sohan a must roster? This is when Did It comes in hand. So if we did a call on Did It. Danny, I could literally walk you through it because I don't know the size of your league, because I don't know, you know, how many roster spots you have, all of that good stuff. I can't really give you a super accurate answer. I could give you my opinion. I do not think in most uh, 12 team leagues, especially that Sohan is a must roster. He's definitely somebody that I would be streaming and holding as he produces. So when he's hot, I hold. When he's not, I drop. And that's kind of how it goes with. Sohan. This one is from Mu Amud. He says, who wins, Levine or Adilo? Um, Levine is banged up. He's going to be out for a few weeks. When healthy, I like Levine, um, but not sure what's going to happen with Delo during this trade deadline. And I know Levine is going to be out for a couple of weeks. So right now, I would say Levine just because I don't – I would rather hold and have Levine later and during the playoffs than anything to do with Delo. So that's where I would go. <laughs> Next up is from Arches. He says, what do I do with Desmond Bain? Seeing how he will be back with only two weeks left in the season, what do I do with him? I'm in a win-now situation, and I'm not sure if I should drop him. I also have Evan Mobley, who is back in two to three weeks. Yikes. So hopefully you have some IR spots. Um, I always recommend, especially in this day and age, to have multiple IR spots in leagues. Um, I wouldn't go around trying to trade Desmond Bain now, though. If you're in desper- desperation mode, however, where you are struggling to, to get into the playoffs, then you got to do what you got to do, right? But I, all signs would point towards me holding Bain and waiting to see what happens when he comes back. At least let him come back and see if you can get a couple of good games off so when you do make a trade, it's not like you're selling him away for peanuts and then the last one we have here is going to be from jeff he says more than halfway through the season how should someone who's 10 and 3 and guaranteed to make the playoffs look at their rosters and make decisions differently than others who are like six and seven on the cusp of making the playoffs and vice versa that is a really really good one jeff so for me my philosophy around it is Once you know that you're in the playoffs, unless there is like some kind of a buy system, right? Some leagues have buys. So like if you have the best record in your conference or division, you get a buy. If you have the best set, one of the two best records in the league, you, those two teams will have a buy. If there's a buy in place, I put my foot to the pedal and I keep doing what got me there. I'm not thinking about the playoffs. I'm thinking about, getting that by that first week of just not playing (coughs) now if in fact you if in fact you don't have a buy structure in your playoff um you know format 
and you don't care who you play. Like for me, like I don't care who I play. And it, like that's one thing in fantasy for me. I'm not like ducking anybody and I'm not trying to get I'm just like whoever gets in my way, that's who I want and that's who I want to play. So for me, once I know that I have a playoff spot and I'm not at, I, mathematically, I'm not at risk of losing it. I start building my team around the playoffs. And this is this is a fun hack that I that I do often and I tell people to try. Go ahead and go to your playoffs in your schedule where you set your lineups. Go to your playoff weeks and start setting your lineup now with the team that you have. If you see a, if you see there are gaps where you don't have players enough players on certain days and it just doesn't look right to you, then you can start making moves to kind of fill those gaps, whether that be with the waiver wire or whether that be with making a trade, right, or making trades. One thing that I would say is just a, a bit of – to approach with a bit of caution is that you don't want to get so locked in on preparing for the playoffs that you that you lose out on deals. So I'm not going to be, like, making bad deals just so I could have a guy who has a really great playoff schedule but give you a guy who's great. For example, the, the, um, the Mavericks – have kind of a crummy playoff schedule. One of the weeks, I think they play two games, right? So Kyrie and Luka, I'm not about to take Luka and be like, all right, man, give me Scotty Barnes for Luka because Scotty Barnes got four games. Don't do anything stupid like that. Like that, do not do that. Don't get, don't overthink it. You're 10 and three for a reason. You're going to the playoffs for a reason. If your team stayed the same, you would probably still win the championship. However, if you have a little flexibility, use that waiver wire and maybe make some smart trades like buying low on somebody like Evan Mobley, who's coming back later. Like think about those kind of moves to kind of solidify, you know, your plan to, to for the playoffs. So that would be my advice on that one. But now that you are prepared to dominate in fantasy basketball, make sure you check out our episode about how to win in dynasty formats. This episode was presented to you by Bet Online, where the game starts. <laughs>